round. Sweet. So, um, I'm back. And it's the next session in the step by step walkthrough number two. Edit, minute, whatever I call it, how to. And I'm going to continue doing this because I've started it. But even if these tutorial doesn't, this tutorial doesn't work, I have a track at the end of it, so who gives a fuck? So, what next? Um, we've done basic foundation of the video, which is getting these samples from the original. Um, we've done the drums, with the basic drums, and we've done the basic arranging of the track. And next, we're going to do what some people consider the thunder. Which is the kind of the main need to send the sound of the massive because I decided that's what I'm going to have. So, um, give me a quick reminder of what the drums sound like. Cool. Um, I'll obviously tweak it all and find the dirt, but. It's the rough kind of vibe, and now let's do the synth sound massive. So, into the new MIDI track. Into that MIDI track. And we have the massive, which is massively awesome. I think it's just loading up. Loading, loading. Is it loaded? Sweet. I'll quickly save it. Yeah. Save set. Always keep saving it whenever you guys are in it. any views, or even if it's not useful. Um, cool. Go. We have masses. What we're going to do is I've got to remember to keep all this in this window because I've got two screens and already have it on another screen. So, got my screen recording going to record a new screen. Don't know why I'm telling you, but. Arm the track. So stage one if you go arm it. No, stage one is you make sure you're drag massively and otherwise you can't do anything. Um actually yeah. yeah, and then arm it. And then we need to make a sound. And we're gonna make one from scratch just to kind of show you what I would do. So it's kinda of like a blank canvas where we start. Well I'm gonna start off by going and we need to make a computer keyboard to trigger the notes, but you can do it however you like. Yeah, let's just do that for three minutes and call it a crap. Um, no, we're going to get an initial sound of these three oscillators. And we're going to do it randomly because I think that's just the easiest way to do it. Drag up all the empty dudes. Let's pick a different. What about kangaroo? I fucking love kangaroo. I think that's why I like the fucking madman. And I'm picking this way position randomly as well. Do you like ducks? That's pretty cool. Well, that's called a kangaroo, but we're going to pick them. And then, let's see what all that sounds like together. Hmm. Not bad. What about detune some of them? Just a little bit. Okay, um, I think you're a shit though to it, so I'm um, detuning that one a bit. If you hear the juddering, it's because I'm doing a million things on my computer at once and I can't do it. Like, and then got my mic running, I've got, and I'm testing out one of the denoising, denoising, the denoising, the denoising, yeah, denoising, I was a bit in, so. So why my voice sounds a little bit different. It's, yeah, I should probably cure it. I didn't quite do it, fuck it. So I'm running all that shit and all running that the whole time. I'm running screen recording stuff. Masses, Ableton, um, all sorts of shit, Facebook, and loads of other programs in the background. My computer's going mad. I was clever, I had to shut most of it off. Save CPU, but yeah. Um, 
Yeah, before we got the sound dial, we're going to do the same thing I normally do for most of my movements and stuff. And actually, wait, first of all, rule number one, restart by again. Because otherwise, the sounds sound different every time you trigger them. So I'm going to explain in another one of the Amplitude 4 is modulating the amplitude. Important to I like the to happen pretty instantly, and you want a little bit of a spike, but you want to kind of dip a little bit so you, you hear the first note, but not quite much. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have the entire, we're going to make like a, say, like a two bar riff inside of massive. So, we hold down a note for two bars, and then massive will do all the modulating in, like inside massive. That makes sense. But I'll show you. Um, it's just one way of doing it. Like a lot of things in Ableton, you can do shit however you like, but I'm going to do it this way. So we've changed this to before one number five. And what we're going to do is a restart button. So it restarts the performer whenever you use the we'll trigger the note. And we're going to click sync. And then maybe this two bar. So the other one is two bar. Yeah, it's kind of obvious that's two over one and two bars. Um, that would be one bar. That would be two, that would be three, that would be four. That's simple maths. I'm doing a maths degree and that's one maths is each. Yeah, two. So we have two bars over there. And we're going to have, we're going to do the same again. Over here, and number six. Same three star. Two. Um, so yeah, that's one, let's say two. The performers are the two performers. One of them is going to be modulating the pitch, one of them is going to be modulating the amplitude. And this will allow us to create cool weekly group noises and cool d -d 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 noises. So modulate E12 semitones, which is your standard choice, because it's an octave. Let's see what happens when we do that. We'll just start there. And then we'll modulate the frequency. This is modulating the frequency, by the way. The frequency is all three oscillators. Um, so you see right now, you can perform a five on there, so as it goes through this, it will modulate the oscillator. No, the frequency. Wait, I made a mistake. I said two bars here, I shouldn't have done that on the line. I should have had like one. I got confused. I wanted a two bar long bit here. So what I should have done is have this as like. 116 for 1 over 8 or something, because that number there is how long each of these things is. So, I think in 1 8 is better. So, you see, as I'm triggering a note, it goes through all this modulation shit. You can set that over here. Except. This time I'm going to modulate the amplitude. Yeah, yeah, so I sound pretty stupid right now, but once we change all these curves, we can get rid of the full sound and shit. Right, so we're going to start off by clicking the load curve. Actually, we're going to drag them all down. We should drag most of them down. Because this is number five, so pitch. And then and six is the um, amplitude. So we're going to get do the amplitude first, because that will give us all the gaps. And then give us the basic shape of it there. So we'll get the big block and see which way is on, which way is off. So it's an hour to see Light blue is off. So. I'm thinking possibly the parameter to be one bit of one sixteen actually. It goes through it quicker. And at this stage we're literally just playing about. I get a cool sound out of it. Um nope, that sounded good.
that noise sometimes. Obviously because I had these Modulation is all flat, and we have this very basic kind of and then, and then gaps. So you can hear what's going on. You can see as it goes through the gap. Um, yeah, so we'll leave that as it is, and then we're going to go to the pitch. And we're just going to start chucking in shit. Like, we're just seeing what happens here. I'm going to throw in some random shapes. Let's see what happens. Let's give it a go. Oh yeah, I've just changed the um uh, the amplitude of the pitch modulation to see what that helps.
um, I've got my pattern down now, what I think is an acceptable room back to room width. Anyway, um, that's just a basic shape. That was probably on the medium to quicker end of things, as well as how quickly I ended up, ended up with a, a pattern I was happy with. So it can take a while, and mostly it's experimentation, but if you do it enough, you can kind of pick it up, you know, you might make different shapes you end up. Yeah, modulate pitch, modulate the amplitude, and um, yeah, pretty fucking and simple. It's just, it sounds like quite a complicated thing to program, but if you do it all in Massive, you can do it quite quickly, and that's why I love Massive, it's just the format. Um, you, can, you can do a full curve shape with the amplitude as well, I might do that later. But you can just chuck in all these shapes and quickly experiment with different modulation patterns. Cool, so um, I'm not going to fine tune the sound now, I'm going to fine tune it at the mixing stage, but I will chuck in a few effects now just to kind of beat things out a bit. Bigger, I don't know how it does it, but it makes it sound bigger, which is especially useful for lead sounds. Like, in that number and button, at least a lot of the way I do it, is I have the lead sound with pretty much maybe with just the drums is the only sound, at least at the beginning of the hook bit, so I want that sound to be big. It's, it doesn't have to be big if you've got millions of other shit going in there with it, but the only real sound in it, you need it to be big, so I mentioned expand that thing. And then a little bit small reverb just to give it a little bit of kind of a ravey kind of vibe to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, sweet. So I'm actually just gonna save that shit for the time being. And then I'm gonna call it, I don't know, Egos. Sound. Yeah, boy. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've been keeping on track on my Twitter, but I managed to lose all my massive presets. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have it saving them all in a decent place for a change. So I just lost them on my computer. Like, so they go into my old project, I can find them because it somehow knows where it is. Which is really weird. Like, I think like, one of my old sounds, when you go into an old project, bring it up and use it, and that's fine. But whenever I search it on my computer, I can't find it. It's as if it's hiding, it's literally hiding, it's fucking weird. But, yeah. Um, yeah. It's weird, but, yeah, cool. Anyway, we've got our basic sound. Um, what we do now is we record a mini note of it playing, just so we have to just to chuck into our song on a, a basis. So, just want to figure out which note I want to use. I like that. It's H on my keyboard, I don't know what that is. So. Yeah, when I say that you got me in my mic, so I don't want to forget to say that in my mic. I'm doing shit. So, uh, so, yeah, it's two bars long, I just randomly pressed it. Um, on my keyboard, so I'm going to use. What 
it was. The play of coming out what now I can. So now we have two bar long play. Right there. We'll call that Lee sound. So if we solo this, I'll solo that in my mic as well. Yeah. Sweet, now you can hear the Pretty cool. We obviously won't just leave that shit for two minutes, but, um, but it's a nice foundation to this stuff. And um, you may have noticed this is a theme of what I've been doing. It's something that I've been doing a lot more recently, and this is through my workflow. This is just to get the basic building blocks in, and then worry about mixing it down and tweaking your sound later. Because you can spend so long just tweaking the setting, not really getting anywhere with it. And then, it may seem like this video has taken a while and you're thinking, wow, that's not actually a very quick way of doing it at all. But I have been talking slash rambling shit the whole way through, so if I was doing it like this for real, it would take about like half as long, probably. Because like right now, I'm just popping it in, I wouldn't be explaining it a bit, so it is a quicker way of doing it. Um, right, so we're just going to copy this into. Make it in the song in it. Um, I'm actually probably only going to have it there. Remember, these are the main sections. Oh, the sounds not work. Yeah, it is working. Right, so we got some basic stuff going now. Um, I think these are the and we've got all the main big elements in. So we've got basic drums, basic lead sample, basic vocal sample, basic massive lead sound, we've got the bridge bit, basic structure going. And what we're going to do next video is we're going to start tweaking it, and then in the process of tweaking it, we'll probably end up chopping bits up, maybe adding in some other smaller sound effect like things or just additional elements just like real more subtle shit because this is like the main bit and then it's good to get the main bit going and then when we're doing the tweaking bit add a little bit subtle shit um yeah we'll leave that transition video um sweet but if you've managed to get this far from the video i'm not mad but yeah fuck it I'm going to go to the next video.